what's going on? It's your boy Joe Fontaine, the VIP Sound Lab. And I just wanted to hit you guys with a, um, another tutorial machine. I want to show you guys how you can sample from your DAW. And uh, basically what's going to happen is in this video, the principles are going to apply to just about any DAW. I'm using Pro Tools right now, but it's really not going to make a difference because as long as your DAW supports VST, RTAS, or audio units, you're going to be good to go. And basically, I'm going to show you how I'm going to get this audio right here from this timeline inside of machine. I'm getting a lot of questions about audio routing and stuff like that. So I'm going to do some updated videos on that also. But for right now, here goes the loop uh, that I got set up right now inside of Pro Tools that I wanted to chop up. All right, you know what I'm saying? Basic loop. But I'm just going to show you how you can go ahead and get their audio you know, into a machine, you can basically sample whatever, you know what I mean, and get, get a lot more intricate. But right now, this is just for demo purposes. So right now, you see right here, I have machine on its own separate uh, instrument track. And over here, I have the drum loop. This is the audio right here. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get it set up so the machine can recognize the audio being played so the audio can get routed into machine. And then from there, you're good to go. I'll show you what I mean. Okay. In case there's someone who doesn't know how to get their instrument set up. In Pro Tools, anyway, these are your inserts and these are your sends. Okay, right here, these are your, in, your inputs and your outputs. There's an icon right here in your inserts. You go to multi-channel plugin. Okay, these sections here is where you're going to find your plugins that you internally scanned into Pro Tools. You know, in case there's someone who's not uh, up to date on that. But anyway, down here where it says instrument. I have some instruments uh, scanned in here, such as, uh, you know, Battery 3, Contact 5, uh, you know, uh, some Rob Pap and Punch, Nexus, stuff like that. Anyway, these are where your instruments are going to show up. Okay, you see right here, Machine. Okay, so that's how I got Machine to come up. Everything else is just where, you, where your plugins are going to show up, okay? So let's take this off. All right, so here's Machine. So... There's two ways you can do it to set it up. Um, I can go to machine first right now. Uh, I don't have to, but I can bring this up. Make sure that you're on a blank group. First of all, I label this one uh, as sampling. You know, your, your sound kits show up over here in machine or whatever. But anyway, you want to be on this tab right here where it says sampling. Get a blank sound. We all know a sound can hold, I think, 128 different samples on one sound. All right. I want to have mine set to EXT for the external audio because it's coming externally from um, Pro Tools into Machine. Here's your inputs. You got two modes here. Okay, you got detect and sync. Detect is if you want to capture a certain sound by its volume level, such as, uh, you know, a snare, kick, whatever the case may be. Uh, the threshold's going to determine that. For example, if I click here, where it says threshold, this little trigger icon comes up where you can adjust the sensitivity or I can't think of a better term, you know, for the threshold, the sensitivity of it, depending on how loud the uh, decibels come in here, is going to trigger a machine to say, okay, I need to start recording. You have a monitor icon here. We all know how it goes. You have the edit tab here. <clears throat> or if you want to uh, sample, or rather edit your sample, we'll get into that. But uh, for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the sync mode. And what I want to do is I want to sync that up to a, uh, a four bar loop. Okay, so before we get into that, uh, you know, I don't want to get anybody off subject. Let's go. Let's go back over here and get it set up in Pro Tools first. All right. So you see right here your sends. Some people call them buses. All right. Right here, I have mine labeled as EXTN. Okay. You can name name your, uh, your inputs, whatever you want to name them. I have mine saved by default, so it makes it easier for me just in the long run. Okay. So I, I use the EXTN like, like this. Okay. It comes up. Pro Tools defaults, uh, pants, hard left and right. I like to get mine uh, down the center. You know, if anybody knows about pants, these are pants where you can control uh, the space in your mix. You know, some some frequencies you want to run right down the middle and have maybe your drums on the outside, your bass on the outside. But that's another story. It's hard to explain. But you make certain room in your tracks by adjusting frequency. Like your subs, you might want to have them way down to like 50 KZ, you know, you might want to have or have some kick drums on 60 where you might want to have the highs up in the 90s and the 100s, you know, stuff like that. I have a frequency chart on my website 
you can take a look at that. Okay, so anyway, I got, let me get the preset up. And right here, this fader is going to control the level of the decibels that's going to be getting sent to machine. Okay, so you can double click here. And now we can bring up this little guy right here where we actually can take another, you know, another EXT uh, monitor right here or your output monitor, I should say. All right. So right now I'm going to leave the uh, volume down on this. I'm going to show you why in a minute. So I hope I don't forget about that right quick. Let's go ahead and just close this down. And over here on the instrument track, you see the in or the audio input path selector. We have that set to EXT in, which is basically letting machine get the, uh, yeah, get the audio from the audio track. So as far as that goes, machine is set up on that. Now from here, you are set up. Okay. As long as your send assignment here matches your audio input path here, they have to match. You're good to go. So from there, you can mute this like so. Okay. You see that track is now muted. Okay. You don't want to make it inactive yet. Okay. But as long as it's muted, the audio is still going to be routed inside the machine. And I'll show you what I mean. Let me uh make sure I'm on this loop. And I am. Okay. Okay. I need to get this set up because I need to see the send. All right. Let's put the send over here. Just give me a second, guys. Just get this set up right quick so you can see what I'm talking about. All right. So now if I was, oh, let me bring my transport. All right, let's put the transport over here. Okay, now you notice, um, let's say if I was to put it in detect mode, as I was uh, mentioning earlier, it's important to have your input set up however you want to set them. If you want to have them on left and right, if you're doing mono, that's fine. Left and right, that's fine. I like the sample in stereo left and right because what happened is your audio is going to come out like that. For example, if I was to push play here, now you see the, uh, the LEDs sounding off here but not here yet because I didn't raise up the slider. I'm going to raise up just a little bit so then that way the audio in the background doesn't go over the mic. But you see right here the level's triggering off. Okay, if I stop that, if I put it on input right. Okay, if I do the same thing. Okay, now you see the right LED sounding off right there. And again, I have the volume down. Now if I was to raise it up just a little bit, Okay, we get that that audio going up. So basically, I'm going to set mine to sync. I'm going to go from my EXT input. I'm going to choose left and right. Again, I like the stereo effect on that. And you want to audition your sound first. Make sure you're getting a decent uh, recording volume. I'm going to just default mine. You can press on Pro Tools Alt and click like so. Like if your volume's down like this, you press Alt and click, and it goes auto automatically up defaults to the zero output gain. And because I'm pretty sure that that is where I need to be at. Besides that, it's just a demo. All right. Now, over in this area here, you have a start icon here. It's going to be waiting for the first bar to actually uh, be sent in. So when you hit play in your DAW, it's going to trigger machine. and It's going to automatically start recording. You set the length here. You can go as many as 16 bars. In this particular situation, I know it's a four bar loop. So I'm going to put four bars. You know, if you had a certain drum loop that you want to chop up, kind of how you do rex loops, because machine maps out uh, your samples uh, going up like this. It maps it out. It automatically maps them out. And, you know, if you had a kick here and a snare here on the map, and, uh, you know, if you wanted to move sounds around, you know, you might want to have a kick kick snare. Well, you know, you can, you can play around with the sounds, you know, if, if you're familiar with, um, you know, making rex loops. But anyway... Let's go ahead and get the audio going. I'll hit start here. You see right here, it's waiting for the next bar is set up. Okay. You have a volume icon here. I'll get to that in a sec. And over here is where you can um, delete your recordings and open the folder where it's going to be held. But anyway, you press start on your DAW. All right, so we get uh, perfectly recorded in. It did a perfect four bar loop for me. You know, I just had to just sit back and relax. And from there, you're pretty much set up and you notice, 
I'm trying to get some room up here so you can see down here you get this little uh your little recording take so you know so if you want to add this chop on separate sounds and do other manipulation to it you can do that because you see how it, you know I can you know pick it up drop it on any sound like so and then in any recording take you do from here they're gonna line up like where this is there'll be another one right here if you did a second take you did a third take it'll be here so on and so on and so on okay you know you might want to back up a sample in case you chop up something you're like hey you know I didn't like how I did that I don't feel like going back to step one make you a couple of backups so you want to come up here name your loop uh, I'll just put VIP loop you know Okay, let's see. All right, I'll just name it as VIP loop. All right, so now we have that set up. Now, on the edit tab, this is the tab where if you wanted to adjust the length of your sample. This is the start of your sample, this is the end of your sample. Okay, now this is the part when you start chopping up um, your audio where the buttons, like right now, this will be the pad one in your machine controller is going to be lit, lit up. When you slice it up, the buttons on your machine control is going to light up. You have a start and you have an end icon here. When you, when you move these faders uh, back and forth, that will determine the length of your sample. Okay, so I'm just going to skip this part right now because, again, this is just for a demo. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to just go ahead and jump over to the slice tab. All right, so this is the part on the slice tab where your uh, machine control is going to light up. Right now, this will be 16 pads lit up. I'm on split mode. Again, there's split, grid, and detect. And uh, I have previous tutorials on that. Let's say if I did, uh, let's go ahead and do eight. Okay, right now eight pads will be lit up. If I did four, right now four pads will, will be lit up. This right here looks good uh, because it's like uh, a little more perfectly on time. Okay, and you have an icon right here. It'll let you hear the. Well, actually, either way, you can you can use your mouse and click on these. You can use your pad on your um, hardware controller, or you can hit this icon here to let the audio play through. So it's pretty much as easy as that. So then from there, what you want to do is you want to um, hit the apply button. Okay, they get mapped out down here, as I was mentioning earlier, kind of how like Rex loops are. So again, down here, make sure that your paint icon is on. If you, if you have the paint icon, oops, if you have your paint icon on like that, what's going to happen is when you come here trying to touch these little mappings, it's going to start painting, you know, uh, audio, whatever. So you don't want to have that on. You want to make sure this paint icon's off. Now when you touch your little mappings, they light up like so. Okay, you have these little keys here. You sound them off that way if you want to like trigger trigger the notes. Um, not really sure if you can touch these icons here and have machine trigger uh, the audio off. So if Native Instruments is watching, I would love to see an update on that. When I touch these um, little mappings, I would like to hear or have a, maybe a button here that's you know gives me an option to actually hear. Uh, my MIDI notes being um, triggered off. It may, I believe it makes editing a lot easier, but that's just my opinion. And again, you can come over here and basically do whatever you need to do as far as uh, moving sounds around, as far as you want to have a different melodic feel, whether it's drum kits or whatever. This is a great way. Now, of course, I'm going way off the uh, the map here. You know, if, you, if you're putting them way up here or something, you're not going to get no sound. It's only going to, you're only going to get sounds from where you have it mapped. So it's going to be just these four, uh, or rather in this little zone range here. Okay. All right. So that's pretty much it. I don't think I left anything out as far as this particular uh, tutorial little module here. Again, this is sampling audio um, internally from your DAW into a machine. It's your boy, Joel Fontaine, the VIP Sound Lab. Be sure to come by my website. We have a new um, VIP support feature now. I can talk to you in real time, live, if you need, if you need any help or any support. Uh, when you come on the website, that'll be the first thing that you notice. We'll have that up now. We have a lot of new uh, drum kits, a lot of new expansion kits. We have a lot of new free drum kits. We have a lot of new free expansion kits. We have a lot of free 
everything. <laughs> I mean, you guys know how it goes. There's tons of stuff in the VIP database. Also, updating you guys, we also have a VIP database too now. That I'm also going to be uploading even more content over there as we're even uh, further expanding out. We're going to be expanding and getting bigger. We're going to have uh, bigger files for larger downloads now. You know, if you guys want to do uh, gigabyte, two, three, four gigabyte size drum kit files, I'm making that possible now. You know, I'm getting requests for, for bigger drum kits. You know, I tried to keep them small previously because, you know, I know people like fast downloads, but hey, I'm going to give the people what they want. Bigger drum kits. We're going to start getting to some big gigabyte, two gigabyte size drum kits. We're going to put those in there. Absolutely free for the VIP members. $9.99, no monthly fees, free controller, editor templates, whatever you need. It's your boy Joe Fontaine of the VIP Sound Lab. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.